Okay, folks, it is October 26th, 2023. Today is a very special day here at Boardwalk Hall as it marked the debut of the restored Grand Cornet 11 ranks, voice number 49. And uh, I'm up here with the stop. I'll show you some details about it. And the first thing we're going to do is show you the nice little card that they left. One of the simplest ever. There you go. It's funny that these uh, cards that they leave usually show, you know, what's on the given Winchest in a given space. And usually they have more than one stop name on them. Now this new video camcorder I've got doesn't zoom out very far. So I'm gonna do my best here. So what do we got? Okay, so front to back, we got 11 ranks here. At the front is a 10 and 2 thirds quint. It's a, it's a double quint, actually. It's in the it's of the 32 foot series, and he's up there at the very front. That's the tallest pipes up there. The bottom octave of the 10 and 2 thirds and the 8 are offset. And the 10 and 2 thirds is built as a standard principle. Nothing unusual there. Now the next rank, the second one in right there is an eight foot and it is actually flared it actually is a little bit wider at the top than it is at the mouth not much but a little bit and again the bottom octave is offset there and then next up when we go to the pipes that are actually on the chest here is a five and one third quint Again, standard construction, nothing unusual, uh, straight pipes, um, basically built as principal pipes. And then we have a four foot octave, a uh, standard four foot, which starts here. It's hard for me to, to get out there because there's no walk board installed yet. But the four foot is actually, actually has double language. So Emerson Richards thought that it needed to be predominant. And so it's a double language stop. Not all the way to the bottom, I don't think. Maybe it is. I guess it is all the way to the bottom. And then the, the real fun begins. So you have the five and a third here. And then starting here, we have a tapered three and one fifth tierce. And that's that's this guy right here. Why on up? I know the lighting isn't great in here, but trust me, it's there. It's that narrow, that narrow one, the tapered one. And then, keeping with his fancy for different pipe forms, we have a two and two thirds here, which starts out as a regular food and goes to, yes, you guessed it, harmonic. So you have a harmonic flute for the two and two thirds pitch of this mixture. And then we get really fun with this guy right here. Coming on down, that is a two and two sevenths. And again, narrow and tapered. Like a conical flute or something. Then you have a two foot here, enormous scale, and again, flared. A little bit wider at the top than it is at the mouth. So each one of the ranks that I've shown you so far is on its own toe board with its own stop action. So you can turn each rank off in turn as you're tuning. But then when we get to the back three ranks here, they, they are on a common channel toe board. And so what we have here is, guess what? Another tierce down here. This is a one and three fifths. So you have a three and a fifth and a one and three fifths coming on down there. And then you have another harmonic fifth sounding rank. This is a one and one third foot stop. This, tape, this uh, harmonic flute here is the one and a third. And then the last rank closest to the uh, walkboard here is a straight one foot. 
pitch in unison. These three stops on this tow board are available separately as a sharf mixture apart from the rest of the rank, uh, rest of the stop. And when we were tuning it, it, it sounds wonderful. I mean, it actually has a, a Tierce in it, so it's more like a Sesquil Terror or something, but it's a really nice sound on its own. The tab isn't working at the console right now. I mean, this hasn't been in operation for a long time, and we're gonna have to sort that out, but the other ones work. Now remember, but I said, work in progress. It just started to play on Monday, and today is Thursday. So you see some blue tape indicating problems here and there, most of which have gone away. We could go ahead and take the tape off because uh, as we were tuning it today, it seemed like things kind of uh, fell into place and were working pretty well. But there's still a couple, couple problems with Pittman's and um, uh, one cipher somewhere. But overall, pretty darn good when you consider that this is 803 pipes and to have this many problems when it's just started to get going, that's really good. And for those of you who are looking closely, the middle octave is missing here because those pipes got so trampled back in the day that they're having them made new and they're not here. They're going to be replaced entirely. So some people have said, what is this thing, you know? And the most facile answer is, oh, it's a principal chorus on one stop tablet. But that's not really true. And I said, okay, well, it's a cornet. Well, not exactly. It's not exactly a cornet either, even though it's called Grand Cornet. Let's go into the voicing room and explore the subject a little further. Okay, class, let's review our basic acoustics, shall we? Now, remember that pipe organs are built and the tonal structures are generally built on a solid foundation of basic acoustics and harmonic theory. And so I prepared this little chart here and we'll, we'll review about how harmonics work. Cliff Notes version. Remember that for any fundamental sound you have, the harmonics are simply multiples, whole number integer multiples of the foundation pitch. So let's say that eight foot C here is 100 cycles per second. It isn't, but let's just say it is. 100 cycles per second or 100 hertz Hertz and cycles per second are the same thing. So if 8 foot C was 100 hertz, the next harmonic up would be 200 hertz. The next harmonic would be 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, and so on. Theoretically to infinity and beyond. But we don't generally worry about anything above <laughs> number 11 here. There's a reason that we stop when it goes to 11. But Generally speaking, when you have a stop in an organ or a chorus, you try to have everything within one system like this. Now, I, I made this chart here illustrating the eight-foot harmonic series. So we're starting at what we would consider unison pitch of eight foot, eight foot C. So the bottom note of the keyboard would be eight foot C, pipe approximately eight feet long. The first harmonic is the four-foot octave. And then the second harmonic, or if you will, sometimes the, the terminology gets confusing because some people call the fundamental the first harmonic, but that's the first one, that's unison. And so it depends on what you call them going up. But I, for, for these purposes, I'll just do it the way I have it here. So the second harmonic is the four foot, two and two thirds, two, one and three fifths, one and one third, one and one seventh, one, eight ninths, four fifths, and eight elevenths. And I stopped here because that's all the harmonics that this organ contains. I'm here at Boardwalk Hall, of course. I'm actually in the voicing room for this little talk. Brent went home for the day, so I can take over the voicing room. So you have this structure. Now, all these odd numbered harmonics in here are related to the unison in the mathematical scheme because they all fit together. And if you take one harmonic minus the next harmonic, you always get the fundamental. That's just the way the math works out. You can shift this up an octave or down an octave or up or down any number of octaves if you wanted to, so to speak. But these are the harmonics of eight foot of unison tone. 
and you'll notice that most pipe organs have these stops. I mean, let's forget about from one and one seventh up. Those are kind of unusual. Only larger organs have these, but up to one and a third, most organs out there over you know, 10 ranks are going to have all these in there. So let's take a look at this grand cornet that the sander designed, figure out why it's so strange. And it is strange. It starts out, the lowest rank is a 10 and 2 thirds foot pitch. Okay, that's off the chart down here. Here's a here's 10 and 2 thirds. It would be off down here somewhere. But the problem is that 10 and 2 thirds is not part of the 8 foot series. Because everything has to be shifted the same amount every octave. So if we made this 16 foot, it would be 16, 8, 5 and 1 third, 4, and so on. So it's not even in the 16-foot series. It's in the 32-foot series. The 10 and 2 thirds is the third harmonic of the 32-foot series. Not 16, not 8. Okay, now keep that in mind. So then the next rank up on the cornet is the 8-foot. Right there. Okay, fine, unison pitch. The next rank is 5 and 1 third. Again, you don't see it on here because five and one third is the third harmonic of the 16 foot series. So as if this whole chart was shifted down an octave, you'd have 16, eight, five and one third. And that's the next rank. So we already have a harmonic of 32, a unison, and then a harmonic of 16. And I actually have to look at my notes here to remember how many, <laughs> all, the, all the harmonics in this thing, even I can't keep them straight. So then the next rank is a four foot, okay? works. Any octaves you can pretty much get away with, but the, ne the next rank is, stop number four, is the four foot. And he made that a double languid, extra loud to reinforce the unison pitch. So then the next rank is a three and one fifth. Okay, and remember it's tapered. Three and one fifth is the equivalent of this one and three fifths. But again, it's of the 16 foot series. You would have 16, a five and a third, four, three and one fifth. So we've got another one of those 16 foots in there, another 16 foot harmonic, okay? Then the next rank is a two and two thirds. And here's two and two thirds. It's in the eight foot series again. So now we've gone up into the eight foot harmonic series with the third harmonic of eight foot, okay? The next rank beyond that is a two and two sevenths. What's that? Okay, here's one and one seventh right here in the eight foot, so can you guess? Two and two seventh is of the 16 foot series. So now we have five and a third, three and a fifth, two and two sevenths, all of which are harmonics of 16 foot, of the 16 foot series, not the eight foot series. Then going on from there, we have a two foot, works in any series, there it is, another unison, and then we have a one and three fifths, a one and one third, and a one as the top three ranks. And look where they are. They're on this chart right there. They are three harmonics of the eight foot series. And they're odd number ones, so they're going to make a fairly strong resultant on their own. So to sum up, okay, anytime you play a note, one note on this cornet, you are generating resultants of 32, 16, and eight all at the same time. I have no idea why he did that. That goes contrary to most organ building practice. Not all, I'm, not, anything I say, there are going to be exceptions to it. I'll tell you that right now. But the bottom line is that it doesn't make sense to have parts of different harmonic series mixed up in one stop like this, as far as I can see, because any stops you add to it, you're not getting one line, it's not unusual, I'm quoting Tom Jones' lyrics here, it's not unusual to have a grand cornet 16 foot pitch, a lot of organs have that, and then a regular cornet, and then on another manual you might have a, the whole thing shifted up an octave to four foot even. And in the pedal, you have a 32 foot cornet, no big deal, makes a nice rumble down there. But to put that on the manuals, I don't get it. But there it is. That's what we got. 
Now, another word about the pipe forms. You notice that this uh, cornet has harmonic flutes, it has tapered pipes, it has flared pipes, it has straight-sided uh, straight principal pipes. And some may ask, where on earth did he come up with the idea to have all these different kinds of pipe forms mixed up in these uh, cornet stops and these mutations? Because if you remember, the carillon mixture in the solo division has stopped harmonic flutes, open pipes, regular harmonic flutes, and uh, a gedecked in there in four ranks. I guess it doesn't have a regular harmonic. It has a stopped harmonic flute pipe. All different kinds of pipe forms. The carillon mixture in the swell has open pipes, cylindrical, flared, tapered, all different styles. Where did that come from? I'll tell you exactly where it came from. It came from a guy in England named George Ashdown Oddsley. G.A. Oddsley. That's right, folks. I know a lot of you have his book at home called The Art of Organ Building, written in the early 1900s. What does that have to do with this? Take a look, get out your Dover edition, and turn to page 463. You will see a chart of all the different kinds of pipe forms you could use in a compound stop to create different effects. Emerson Richards was a big fan of Oddsley's. How do we know? Because here at Boardwalk Hall, over in one of the library rooms, they have an original signed copy of The Art of Organ Building by G.A. Oddsley, autographed, dedicated to Emerson Richards, and it came from the Richards estate. So we know he read that book and took it to heart. Now, he didn't use everything that Oddsley said, because Oddsley was a big fan of lower wind pressures than anything that was used here. But... Many of his ideas on the concert room organ and harmonic corroborating stops and compound stops were used almost verbatim out of his book. So that's where, and, and I invite, seriously, if you have a copy of The Art of Organ Building, take a look. You'll be amazed at how much of the design was lifted straight out of Audsley's ideas. So that concludes this part of the lecture and uh, I'm gonna try to play something. I don't know if it's gonna make it in the video or not. There's a lot going on at the hall, but uh, I'm gonna wrap this up and uh, hopefully see you down at the console.